Today we're going to be mounting this, the Hero 10 Black Bones Edition on top of the DJI FPV drone. Now the Hero 10 Bones Black Edition requires additional power directly from a quad. Now it's a little bit more difficult on the FPV drone, but I'm gonna take you through step by step on how to do this. Let's get started. What's going on everybody? Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and today we're mounting the Hero 10 Black Bones Edition on top of the FPV drone. I'm gonna take you through step by step how to mount it and also how to power it directly from the FPV drone. Before we get started, there are some equipment, some tools that you will need to be able to complete this job. Obviously, you will need a Hero 10 Black Bones. This does not have any sort of internal power. You will need to power it directly from the FPV drone. We're gonna be using the Hero 10 on top of the FPV drone from DJI. Now, I already have a mount on top of my FPV drone, so if you don't have any means of mounting your Hero 10 directly on top of the FPV drone, you can always pick up my helmet directly from our Etsy store, link is in the description below. But if you don't wanna choose this, you can choose basically any other source to be able to mount it on top of here. Also, I do recommend picking up an external voltage regulator. This is a BEC from iFlight. They work incredibly well at limiting the voltage that's going directly to your Hero 10 bones. Now, there is a built-in regulator on the Hero 10 black bones. So I wanted to go ahead and add an additional little blurb excerpt about the voltage regulator that I've added on additionally. So adding a BEC on top of a BEC is typically a no-no, but I feel like in this instance, because the voltage isn't going to be great enough, we're basically downstepping the voltage to five volts, and in turn, the Hero 10 should only see the five volts that we are basically outputting. I don't see there being much of a problem. I've been basically doing the same thing with the balance lead for the past month since I've got the second Hero 10 Black. So I've already blown up one Hero 10 Black Bones, running it directly from the battery pads without any sort of BEC. Now, I've been using the BEC from Aerial Pixel. He did a video talking about this as well, using a balance lead with the uh, iFlight balance lead BEC, and that worked perfectly, and I haven't had any issues. And I know countless other people have run their cameras the same way and have never had an issue, even before we had the Hero 10 bones. So essentially, this is doing the same thing, just in a little smaller, more svelte compact because we don't have a balance lead. Now, again, if you don't want to run any sort of uh, additional protection like a BEC, maybe just adding a capacitor in line would be just fine just to sort of slice off any of those voltage spikes. I don't know how clean the output is on the DJI FPV drone. And because I don't see any visible capacitors, that's one other reason why I wanted to go this route. End of the day, if you blow up your Hero 10 bones, they're going to replace it. They're going to replace it. GoPro's just going to give you another one. So it's really no harm, no foul. But again, you take the own risk of which way you go, whether you add an additional BEC or you add a capacitor or you just raw dog it and just throw it on there without any additional protection. That's up to you. I'm just doing it my way because that's what's worked best for me. May not be right, but it's working. All right, back to the video. Of course, you do need the power cable, which I've already modified this one. So we're just going to modify it again. Some shrink wrap to wrap up the BEC once everything is soldered. Some snips. I'm gonna also use a mount because I lost the bottom piece for my Hero 10 bones, but that's okay, so we're just gonna have a mount on there as well. Of course, you just need some standard FPV tools as well. This is just a standard kit. You can pick this up from anywhere. Um, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Race Day Quads, Pyro Drones. So this is something pretty standard. I recommend having one of these if you are going to be flying FPV anyhow. And then of course, you will need a soldering iron. Now this is a very portable, small soldering iron and um, it can go up to 400 degrees Celsius. We are going to be soldering at 400 degrees Celsius. We want the hottest maximum uh, ability to solder that we can. So that way we can make these joints quickly and easily and get out of there as swiftly as possible. But with that being said, we need to go ahead and tear down the FPV drone's top half so we can expose where we're going to be soldering to. All right, let's get that going right now. Okay, so included in your FPV drone should have been an Allen key. It's a 1.5 millimeter Allen key, but if you don't have that Allen key, you can just grab one again from any one of these kits. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off my helmet, which will also take some of the screws off that we do need 
to be able to expose this back half here. So there's four screws that hold this top piece on here that I have mounted. And then there's two screws on the bottom. Of course, also take your lens cover off for your gimbal. And just beneath the gimbal, there is four more screws to be able to take this little plastic shroud off. Once we have the plastic shroud off, then we'll go ahead and remove the cover that's going to hold the heat sink in place. Alrighty, so now with the top half of the FPV drone exposed, we're going to need to take these four bottom screws off that hold the heat sink screws down. Also, I just want to make mention of this as best practice. You want to make sure your FPV drone battery is not connected. You can leave it plugged into the slot, but just make sure the power lead is not connected to the battery. The FPV drone is pretty awkward to work on if you don't have anything here. And if you want to make sure that it doesn't make contact, you can even put a little piece of electrical tape around this just to ensure that it doesn't make contact at any point. OK, now that we have these four screws off, we're going to go ahead and lift up on this little piece back here. And it does help actually to take the battery out for this part because you can actually push underneath here to take this tab off. That's the heat sink. Now I'm gonna put the battery back in just so we can work on this. Now the heat sink is pretty tight because it does have some sort of sticky glue that's on here, but just remove the heat sink and then this will expose the area where you can do your ground points. So you'll notice once we get that cover off, you'll see that there's two open pads on the ESC. You have the VBAT pad and then you have the ground pad. The VBAT will be for your power and the ground will be for your ground lead. This is where we're going to use to solder those leads directly to the ESC. All right, let's go ahead and add some pre-tin solder to that. Now, as far as brand of solder, I like to use the Kester solder. I find that this works really well. I get really, really solid results with this. Now, you could add a little bit of flux to these pads, but I'm not going to add any flux. I will, however, pre-tin the top of my iron before we do this. Now, it's important to do this very carefully. We don't need a lot because our leads are going to be very small. I'm going to do our V-bat side first. Just two little dots and they do appear to be on there okay. So now we can go ahead and get our cables ready to go. So with our cables, that's what's going to mount directly to our BEC. Now iFlight includes some cable in here, so we're just going to use what they've already included. Remember, black will be to ground and red will be to power. Okay, so my ground lead is connected and now I'm gonna connect my power lead. And for the power lead, we're just gonna go right off to here. Perfect. So now we have power and ground just like that. All right, with that being said, now we can go ahead and add that back to here. This is just a little thermal pad, helps absorb the heat from the ESC. And now we can go ahead and remount our heat sink. Now our heat sink does have a little stop gap here, so we shouldn't have any issues with that. Now we're ready to put this plastic piece on the back side. Now I went ahead and just added a little bit of a cut to mine. That's going to allow me to slip these cables through without pinching them. Just like that. Because the last thing I want to have happen is those cables cut mid-flight. Now we can go ahead and put the four screws back into the back side that holds the heat sink down. 
Now with the top plate firmly in place, we can go ahead and put the top shroud back onto the FPV drone. All right, so hey, it's Ken from the future here. A couple of things when you're going ahead and doing your reassembly, make sure you get this little vent piece back into place. Um, I noticed that as I was going about it, this vent piece popped off. Uh, while the vent is probably not wildly important, it's just never a good idea to have any sort of uh, components left over. All right, and then the last piece I wanna go ahead and do is I do wanna go ahead and add a couple of spots here uh, for zip ties. Now you'll see there's this little channel here. It's a little channel here, it's hard to really see, but I'm gonna make a spot here for a zip tie. Now how I'm gonna do this is going to be somewhat silly. I'm gonna use my solder and iron to put two little holes in this hood. Hopefully that works out, because otherwise I just destroyed a hood. All right, so let me reassemble all this again. Now I do just wanna bring a little bit of attention to this. It is important to make sure that you are soldering the correct leads directly to the BEC. You'll notice that on this, there is a out and an in. The in is up top and the ground leads don't really matter. So just make sure that your in comes from the FPV drone and your out goes to the camera. Okay, let's solder this. Now I am going to pre-tin this so that way it's easier to solder everything together later. And then we'll just twist this a little bit to take up some of that slack. And again, we're going to run heat shrink on this, so hopefully that'll uh, absorb some of that lead there. And then this will be for the BEC dr for the drone itself, which will go into the back of here, which it's going to be mounted directly there. So we have very very limited uh, play, which I think is a good thing. So we'll go ahead and just take a look at how this is actually going to mount to the FPV drone. Alrighty, so once you make sure that your cable is cut correctly and at the correct length that you need to reach your Hero 10 bones, you can go ahead and solder it to your BEC. So again, the BEC step is only additional, it's not necessary, but Again, seeing so many people pop these Hero 10 boneses without running an additional BEC makes me a little bit nervous, so I just rather rather err on the side of safety and instead of having to worry about sending it in for a claim. So, never hurts. Um, so, BEC in place, we're gonna go ahead and solder directly to this. Now, before I solder directly to this, I do wanna go ahead and cut down my heat shrink a little bit because I am going to heat shrink where I solder and also on top of the BEC. So, and it doesn't take much, I'm just gonna make sure that this will fit that correctly and it does. And what I'll do is I'll bring my heat shrink all the way up to the top of this, or if I want it to, I can just disconnect this again um, and add it on later, which probably is a better way to go so that we don't accidentally uh, shrink it as you're uh, heating up the BEC. So we're gonna just go ahead and do a little more pre-tinning and then we'll solder and then we'll power it on for the first time, make sure everything functions. All right, so with everything soldered up, it should just look like this. Your solders don't have to be perfect. I mean, if you're not the world's best solder, that's that's perfectly okay. Just make sure nothing is interjoining and uh, you should be good to go. So with that being said, now I'm gonna go ahead and slip over this heat shrink. Just to add some additional grounding and safety. But before I actually go and heat shrink this, I am gonna plug this into the back of the Hero 10 bones because one thing I wanna make sure of is that five volts is enough to power this. Um, so easiest thing to do, make sure you don't have anything grounded out, plug in your drone, power it on, 
which it powers on perfectly okay. And then we'll try to power on the Hero 10. And the Hero 10, I do see, is showing that it's blinking. And if the light is blinking slowly, that means it is recording, which it is. So we've just now successfully set everything up. So now what we'll do is we'll just stop our recording. We'll power down our FPV drone, just like that. Power down, and now we're gonna go ahead and clean up this by just going ahead and heat shrinking this. Now that we know that five volts will work. Alrighty, so with uh, a few minor remaining screws, we are just about done. We know that it works, and uh, I think that's a pretty easy project, honestly, if you wanna reduce the weight and get uh, nice, smooth footage out of your FPV drone. This is honestly the way to go about it. Uh, this is pretty easy. For the most part, like I said, the hardest part of this is the freaking shroud because it never goes on correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in one more time, just like so. And then I'm gonna take my zip tie that I put up here and I'm just gonna zip tie the cable so it sits in there. And I will just, uh, Hold that, actually. There we go. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Just like that, perfect. And this will just keep uh, that cable from flopping around and hitting the props, just like this. And voila. You have just successfully added your Hero 10 Black Bones Edition to the DJI FPV drone, vastly improving uh, the overall image quality. And it doesn't add barely any weight. It adds like 60 grams in total additional to the FPV drone, which is definitely a huge improvement over adding a Hero 10. Not only that, you shouldn't have any issues with GPS uh, with this unit. I know a lot of people have complained about GPS problems when adding a Hero 10 or a Hero 9. This should solve that problem. So if you're looking for this mount, this mount can be found on our store. It's originaldobostore.com. It is the DJI FPV helmet mount. And um, yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop it a like. Comment, let me know if you wanna see more tutorials like this. I will see you in the next one. Stay original. Checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me. My attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my successes only made them envious. They got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money to cry.